video we're going to be changing the timing belt, something that's been long overdue. I don't know if you can hear me, hopefully the wind doesn't destroy the audio, but I'm on a ferry right now. This is one of a few uh, ferry, vehicle ferries here on the island, so we're actually, as you can see, there's the island there. And there's the mainland UK. I'm currently going to Bournemouth to go and see uh, someone called Wayne, uh, who's becoming a good friend of mine. Wayne is in Bournemouth and he does mechanics and stuff like that. He does all sorts, so um, he's agreed to help me and supervise me changing the timing belt. So I set off this morning at about 5.20 a.m. Earliest ferry, which I'm on now, is the cheapest. <laughs> And I'm on a budget, always on a budget. So, so anyway, it should be an interesting day. Also, shout out to uh, Jim Kale at Westy Wears for sending me this shirt. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a good day. I arrived at Autobahn in Bournemouth, also known as Wayne's Workshop. As you'll soon find out, today was a learning day for me, and I could not have picked a better teacher. Wayne has also had many vehicles in his lifetime. He's had two rabbits, a rabbit and a rabbit pickup, both Largo Blue, and he's also been featured in many magazines. So let's get started with replacing this timing belt. First, I took off the cover. Seeing cracks like these on your timing belt is a telltale sign that it's time to change your belt. Volkswagen recommend you change your belt every 80,000 miles. If you've bought a vehicle second hand with no paperwork, like me, I think you should replace the timing belt straight away, along with giving the vehicle a full service. We then took off the alternator belt and Wayne kindly pointed out all the markings to look for in conjunction with the timing. We then marked the necessary areas with a paint pen to make it more visible for me to see. Remember, this is all new to me. After taking off the timing cover, I think it's safe to say I need to order a new one. With everything marked up, it was okay to take off the old belt. This is gonna make you feel sick. I'm, I'm just gonna get the camera ready for it, hang on. So, a lot of people see a cam belt looking bad like this. Yeah. Well, that is, that is bad. But the real test of a cam belt is when you put it through a twist. <laughs> that's a real test. That's nasty, that, isn't it? So what happens is, the teeth spin off, and then the crank just spins around on the bottom. So the fact that I can do that. So forget that, which is bad, that tells you it's, it's way overdue. But yeah. you put a belt through a test like that. <laughs> that is horrific to see. So there's nothing. Yeah, absolutely a miracle. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So this is a brand new timing belt for a two litre TDI. Yeah. They're obviously a lot, lot thicker and a lot more over engineered because they need to be. But yeah. what you do is you do that. You look for lifting. Obviously, there's not going to be any lifting. Right. And that, that's just an absolute small so that, one. That's the small one is the crank. Yeah. Then it's, it's the intermediate shaft or distributor drive or vacuum pump if it's a diesel, but that drive there, so that mm -hmm. stays put. So get on there, then on there, and you're sort of like pulling it up as you pull it, pulling the whole belt up. Okay, let's do that. 
as soon as you pull that tight, mm -hmm. this slack is going to rotate this. Ah. So you've got to have it so that it feeds up. So what I do is I keep my finger here. Yeah. And I keep an eye on everything. So by keeping your finger here, you can go up to this one, right? Yeah. And it's tight. And that more or less lines up so you know you haven't moved anything. Then you go around to there, keeping it tight all the time. I'm going to take this off and you're doing it. So. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fine. And then that is where it needs to be. So all the slack is on this side. Yes. Not, no slack there. Right. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Okay. So. Bring that across. And it should line up. But I've got to keep this tight. Yep. Keep the tension on that. Then this part will be slack. And that's yep. not. And now push the belt all the way onto everything. Can, do we need to check that this is in the same position as before? We are going to check everything yeah. is in the same position. Now, when, <coughs> what are we checking for here with the, the tension of the belt? So what I did was I did that up to nip, alright? So mm. I just did it so that it won't fall backwards. And I've been gently tweaking this up, alright? Now, with these, it wasn't an exact science, but on the longest stretch of the belt, this bit, you're supposed to only be able to do 90 degrees, so that's your flat, rotate this, 90 degrees, and that is it, I can't really get any more, I mean obviously if you're one of the strongest both on earth you probably could, but the idea is it's like, that feels like 90 degrees to yeah. me. Yeah. And always aim for the middle, so the middle, because that's going to oh, be yeah. the slackest point, isn't it, yeah? So about here? Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying, it's like you can't, Really you don't want to force it, but that's where it wants to go. Yeah, I'm turning. Yeah, clockwise. Yeah. It felt like it went really easy then. Yeah, because you've got you've gone past TDC on one of the cylinders. It's gone right. compression, and then it's gone past. Okay, so that's the first one. Yeah, so we should be halfway then. Yeah, yeah. we go around again. So that resistance that you're feeling each yeah. time is a cylinder coming up. Right. Okay, so. Get, you must be getting close now, so yeah. gentle. Real slow. Now, if you have to use your hand to tap the ratchet, do that. Okay. Just, that's it, that's yeah. perfect. That's a good technique. Uh, it's around this area, isn't it? Yeah, I'll tell you when to stop. Teeny weeny bit, stop. Right, so that's that. Now uh, you need to check everything and tell me that it's okay. After rotating the crankshaft, I then made sure that all the markings lined up exactly how they should. We then tightened everything back up. Now let me tell you, I cannot thank Wayne enough for taking the time out to show me how all this works. I felt like I soaked up so much information and Wayne was really patient with me. The guy is an absolute legend. Having a garage replace your timing belt for you can be quite expensive. So I was fortunate enough to learn how to do it myself and save a little bit of money. Luckily, this is a fucking old vehicle. This would be a very expensive job if I had a modern vehicle because with new vehicles, it's not just a case of changing the timing belt. It's the case of changing the water pump, the pulley, the belt, and in most cases, it's more difficult to access than a simple Volkswagen Mark I. I was also fortunate enough to have the truck on the ramp, which meant we could examine it and spot anything that could cause an issue in the future. We found multiple holes in the exhaust, both front brake caliper guides have perished and need to be replaced, but other than that, the floors and the panels are solid, which is probably due to it spending most of its life in sunny California. We then rectified the camber on the front wheels by adjusting the camber bolts, after that I bought some new split pins from Halfords and Wayne kindly showed me how to tighten up the rear wheel bearings correctly.
The wheel's supposed to be turned. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about that, it's because it's off the ground. It's, it's in neutral. Right. Don't worry. <coughs> right. That's much better. Yeah. <coughs> Other than the exhaust blow it's on here. Right. Not rattly. I've been pretty happy with that for a truck to sat on its arse for how many years and then you've all of a sudden just got around from it. What was that? That's the strobe, which is not... Hang on a second. Uh, right, so that's the strobe for timing. And that's how you check the timing, but we'll, we'll do that in a little bit we've got disconnect from back pipes and this that and the other and guys that know what they're talking about like they're really enthusiastic they recognise that trail so that's why I want to keep sort of really geek <laughs> out over them. sure yeah but really I'd like this to be idling a lot lot lower than it is no chance of getting it any lower That's why it nearly cuts out, because there's no advantage to show it up. We also discovered the vacuum advance thingy wasn't doing what it should. And just for peace of mind, I'd like to replace the whole distributor to be safe. After all, this is my forever vehicle. You can tell it's rough, because it feels rough. I mean, look at that. That's just all the shit I dragged off it already. So do a little bit. I think you can hear it, it's like sort of sand on the paint. Really? Mm -hmm. If this was mine, that's what I'd be doing to it now. I wouldn't be going home until I'd done the whole thing. <laughs> right. As we had a little bit more time until I had to get the ferry home, Wayne showed me the benefits of using a clay bar, cut and compound and polish, and a random orbital on the truck. And the results left me speechless. I'm definitely going to have to invest and save up for this exact kit. Doing that area. And what's that stuff for the second bottle there? That's so we've gone up now, so we've gone from compound, then we've gone up to polish, and then after that you put wax on. Honestly, it was like so bad. I had a barbecue down here for like the garage's like birthday or whatever it was. And I had a caddy parked at the back there. And no one took a blind bit of notice of it. Not even said, who's is that caddy? Mm. And then I brought it in over the winter and I cut every panel back and I put all loads of new plastics and mirrors on and everything. And everyone was like, where the hell have you found that from? And it's it was like, there the whole time. It was there the whole time. And it was just because I put some time into it and made it really pop. Mm. But they didn't see it before. Like, it's so bizarre. That looks nice, that does. But the green's like what it should be, isn't it? Yeah. But it's, you're either into it or you're not, but... I think it would look good like it. This is Wayne's T5 pickup. I thought I would include it in the video. The pickup version of these T5s are super rare to see and I'm a big, big fan. Well, there you go. I can now say I have replaced the timing belt and it's all thanks to Wayne for showing me and being my mentor for the day. A massive thank you to Wayne, I'll leave his Instagram in the description and make sure you go and give him a follow. Thank you so much for watching another video here. Remember, if you want to see more videos like this, then please press the like button and subscribe if you're new and I will see you in the next video. 
Turn up the 80s, sounds of the 80s Rhapsody, the greatest hit the day my mama made me 99 problems, why I don't look or sound like 